What's up, guys? Cypherpo808 back again, and we're here for some more One Piece action. Today, we got my live reaction to chapter 1063 entitled The Only Family I've Got. All right, are you guys ready for this? Are we going to get some more Vegapunk? Are we finally going to see the real Vegapunk? Are we going to see what Kid or Law are up to? Are we going to find some more about Bonnie's backstory? What do you guys think is about to happen? Let's jump in and see. All right, so starting off with the cover page. All right, looks like we got Brulee crying over there, and it looks like uh, crackers on the ground right there and says, Pudding's been kidnapped, and we got Pudding up there. All right, so why would they take Pudding? Is it because she has something to do with Sanji? But, all right, that's the cover story. Let's jump into the chapter. Okay. All right, so starting right off the back, we got, a, it says, a satisfying meal, and you see Luffy and Chopper and Bonnie, and they're all just looking like Tank Man right now, and they're like, whew, delicious. And they're like, oh, what's keeping everybody? All right. And then they're like, I'll bet they all love the food machine. Everyone except Sanji. All right. So Sanji probably not going to appreciate, you know, the beautiful art of cooking being taken over by a, a robot or I guess a machine in this case. So, but anyways, let's go. Moving on. And we see Jinbei's over there, you know, still looking like normal, being the voice of reason. All right. It says, uh, you guys sure can eat. All right. So this is, um, you know, the big Vegapunk. Uh, all four of you have bulging bellies and then he we see Jim Bay's like oh I was already like that <laughs> and then what do we got next all right so we got this like robot looking dog and says uh the recycle her and it's like chomping up all the food that are like the trash from all the food and everything and then what do we got next all right so we see the big bag of punk looks like she's uh starting to walk away and says well I ought to get back to work if I don't run right no one will and we see Luffy's over there, you know, waving off to it, you know, just having a grand old time. He's finally gotten to eat and everything. And then, all right, it looks like kind of like a jetpack or something. We just see it kind of going off into the distance with a stream, you know, smoke stream right there. And then we see Bonnie, she's like, what kind of job is that? And then they start walking away and they're like, who are they? And it turns around, looks like, all right, it almost looks like little chopper sized people kind of walking around right there. And then Bonnie's like, oh, I think it's safe to assume those are the lab assistants. All right, so we got like some little Oompa Loompa lab assistants going on right here. You know, Oompa Loompa. All right, what do we got? It says, odd. This place seemed deserted a few seconds ago. All right, so Jim Bay's like, yo, where'd all these people kind of come from? Like, nobody was here, and now all of a sudden we got all these people walking around. And then, okay, Bonnie's noticing something. And then she's like, oh, isn't it a little hot for those? And then we see Luffy, he's over there. He's like got on this big, you know, uh, winter coat going on. He's like, these clothes feel so light. They're so nice and breezy too. All right, so even though it's a big long coat, obviously uh, Luffy's enjoying it. He's got a nice breeze. So let's see, what do we got next? All right, here. Okay, so Luffy, he's like, oh, where'd you get it from? Bam, right there, fashion store. And he's like, nothing be beats free clothes. Yeah, nothing beats free clothes after a complimentary meal. So we see Bonnie kind of looking on. She's all happy. She's like, oh, I get to shop. I got free food. Like, what else are we going to get? It says style selection. How about a battle uniform? Poof. All right. So kind of looking like uh, Kinemon's fruit, you know, kind of poofing them into some crazy clothes. All right. Got to gotta say I'm liking, I'm liking the outfit right there. So we see Bonnie. She's kind of in this, like, futuristic kind of black leather looking thing. She got real... Real high skirt. She got some, uh, you know, thigh high leggings on with these crazy uh, elevator boots on. And she's like, oh, these are super light. They make me feel like I'm floating. And then we see Chopper over there. He's got, you know, his coat on right there. And then we see Jinbei in the background. He's like, oh, they even have tropical styles. He's wearing like an Aloha shirt. He's like, these would make for perfect disguises, but it's probably too late for that. All right. Yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, wearing a Aloha shirt is going to really help you not stand out, Jinbei. But, what okay. All right, well, I'm off to find some weapons and deal with Vegapunk. Catch you later. And then, okay, wait, whoa, whoa, says, heads up. It's Kuma. And they're like, wait. Oh, okay, so Cypher Paul has obviously landed. If we got a baby Kuma, you guys thinking that's the Kuma that they're returning right now? Is Bonnie about to be pissed? All right. Is it just me, or is he looking for us? All right, okay, whoa, nope, nope, nope. Take that back. This is a completely different Kuma. We got police officer Kuma over here. Got like a little sheriff's hat on. Got this big like uh, futuristic looking armor and it says police across. Got his little sheriff's badge on the side. And they're like, let's get out of here. 
He's about to charge. All right, and he just looks like he's coming right at them. He's got this real intense look on his face. And we just see him running and sprinting. And then, okay, so it's just like the pacifista. You've got, you know, the giant laser beam that's about to fire out his mouth. And it says, uh, provisions and garments reported stolen, thieves detected. All right, so I guess it's not free. Uh, you probably should pay for that, Luffy. And then they're like, we see Bonnie, and she's just looking on like, that's her dad, but it's not her dad. You know what I mean? Like, she's seeing this face, and it's her father, but she knows that's not her father. And then all of a sudden, we just see this massive explosion. And then they're like, wait, why did they just pop out then? What the hell is going on? And then they're like, wait, surely the damage you're causing is worse than what we did. All right, and we see Jinbei and Luffy kind of fly back. And then we see Chopper kind of getting all turned around. And they're like, all right, he's trying to kill us. All right, what do we got? And then we see Luffy. He's like, we'll be toast if we don't fight back. Yeah. Okay, so Jim, Jinbei's you know, kind of agreeing with him. But is Bonnie really going to sit there and let them attack the person or thing that looks like her father? It's like, we, either way, we've got no choice. And then, damn, we just see Bonnie kick the shit out of Luffy. Just whack right in his face. And then all of a sudden, we see poof, huge explosion coming out of the palm of the police, Kuma. And then we see Luffy getting up. He's like, yo, what the hell, Bonnie? Why'd you kick me? And she's like, didn't you see his lasers? I've got to slug him. And then, okay, no, that was Luffy. And then, okay, like I said... You know, even though that's not her father, she's like, that's my father. And she just sees that face like that's her dad. And then Luffy's like, wait, what? And then she's like, wait, he's the only family I've got. So they're like, she's like pretty much pleading with the straw hats. Like, please don't attack him. He's the only family I've got. And then they're like, when you said your dad was turned into a cyborg, you were talking about Kuma? Okay, so Jinbei, you know, obviously knows Kuma from his time in the Warlords. So... Uh, even Jinbei didn't kind of make that connection that, oh, your father was Kuma, you know, uh, someone probably strong that got turned into a cyborg by Dr. Vegapunk, you know, so for the world government. But even Jinbei didn't kind of make that connection. And then it says, I'm begging you, please don't hurt my daddy. Okay, and then in the corner, we see this little flashback of a young, young Kuma holding up a little tiny Bonnie right there. And they both look, you know, extremely happy and Bonnie just in this shot like you can feel the pain in her face like she is just crying and bawling her eyes out and then we see Luffy he's like get out of my way it's just a pacifista and all of a sudden we just see boom huge explosion we see the palm tree kind of blowing in the wind in the next panel all right and then what do we got all right a certain sea in the new world Oh, it looks like we got Blackbeard ship, the uh, Zebek or whatever. And then we got his iconic laugh. Zed, ha, ha, ha. All right, who's he going after right now? Oh, oh, is he about to tangle at law right now? Says, it's no good, Cap. Okay, I think this is Beppo talking. He says, it's no good, Captain. And then, okay, it looks like they're getting a whole bunch of leaks. So either they have to dive really deep or there's a really strong current or something. It's kind of, you know, messing up the polar tang right now. And then we see Law and in the background. You see his crew kind of trying to patch up, you know, the leaks that are about to spring. It says, another hit like that and the water pressure will crush us. All right, let's surface. We won't be able to escape. There's land northeast of here. All right, prepare for battle and be quick about it. Wait, what the? Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell is going on? Okay, it looks like normal law, and then I go to the next panel, and law is a chick? Wait, I, wait, I'm so confused right now. All right, anyway, okay, it says prepare for battle and be quick about it. And then we see Be Beppo looks like he's got girl hair too and says, wow, Captain, you're so cute now. You have a death wish? Crap, we're sorry. All right, it got me too. Keep away from the... Okay, what the hell's going on? So there's some kind of infection going around, turning them into, into girls or something. All right, is this a power from um, someone on Blackbeard's crew? Is he able to do this? And they're like, his power is contagious. They're hoping to disorient us with this forced gender flipping. It'll be fine, though. Our clash is what the Emperor's taught me. 
that devil fruit powers can be countered if you use a great deal of hockey. All right, so Law, we see Law, he's trying to focus, you know, he's trying to focus all of his hockey in him, kind of trying to make himself, uh, you know, impenetrable by devil fruit powers or anything, kind of really like how Kaido and Big Mom were when he's like, oh, I can't use room on them. Their hockey's too strong. And then ours, all of a sudden we see the polar tank kind of erupt out of the surface of the water. And then, okay, the next one, it looks like we got Trophy back. Looks like he's got his little scraggly beard back. And he's like screaming, he's like, ah! And then what do we got? Oh, he managed to nullify the disease. All right, I'd expect no less from a pirate worth three billion. And then, okay, we got Doc Q right here and says, uh, that's how diseases go. An antibody always comes along and when one person finds a remedy, it's not long before everyone's cured. And it says, Doc Q, sick, sick fruit. All right, so we finally figure out why Doc Q looks like that. We find out what his power is, what his um, devil fruit is. And then we see he's like coughing. He's like, it was entertaining though, right? I call this one the Milady Transformation Plague. Okay, so pretty interesting. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. And then we see Van Auger in the next panel and says, Burgess, I'm going to send you over to that island. We see Burgess looks like he's got some, uh, you know, head armor on right there. He's like, got it. And it says, uh, somebody's in the woods. And then what do we got right here? Okay, hold on. It says, Jesus Burgess, buff buff fruit. As if this dude wasn't like, you know, huge enough and buff enough, we're going to throw the buff buff fruit at him? Like, what the hell? And then, okay, we know he got Burgess's laugh. And he's like, wee ha ha. My buff buff fruit powers are the freaking best. So he just looks like a roided out monkey right now. You know, he's just laughing. And they're like, he's lifting a mountain. How do you get in front of us? All right, so they're freaking out, you know. You just see this entire mountain getting lifted up by one person. And they're like, superhuman strength, bizarre contagion, teleportation. These guys have hunted down some insane powers. No wonder their bounties keep rising. All right, so Law kind of assessing the situation, you know, realizing all the stories he's hearing about Blackbeard are true. And now he's kind of getting to see firsthand, you know, the culmination of all their hard work on Blackbeard's crew as far as accumulating different devil fruits. So they got a lot of different avenues and things that they can do. They got invisibility. They got someone who can blend in. They got Burgess who can lift the damn mountain. You got Doc Q who can, uh, you know, inflict people with sicknesses and not just like normal sicknesses. Like, I don't know if it's just any kind of sickness he kind of comes up with or thinks of, but man, Blackbeard's crew is kind of like, I guess it makes sense. Doc Q having sick, sick fruit. And, you know, we got Chopper. He's going to, you know, cure everything. So you got to be able to handle and take this devil fruit down, you know, personally. But anyways, we're going back and it says, uh, okay, it looks like a bird just is throwing the mountain at them. They're like, it's going to crush us. And we see Law using room to get them out of there. All right, we're going to see a Blackbeard and Trafalgar Law clash. You guys hoping to see that? And then, all right, we see someone coming in. All right, looks like Blackbeard is showing up himself. He's like, it's been a while, hasn't it, Trafalgar Law? And then we see Law. Okay, Law draws his sword. He's ready to go. He's like, what do you want? And he's like, is that any way to speak to a fellow member of the worst generation? And we can see, you know, the concern on Law's face. He's freaking out right now. He's like, uh, when you kid and straw had left Wano, I knew one of you would end up here. All right, so he was waiting for them. Uh, and, you know, it's pretty quick considering he was just an Amazon lily trying to, you know, get Boa Hancock's fruit while they were in Wano. But he's like, but I had no way of knowing which one of you would show. Says, okay, and we see Blackbeard's like riding on top of Doc Q, on top of, um, uh, what is that, Stronger? And it says, Stronger's mythical horse horse zone fruit model Pegasus. All right, so he got wings now. Says, Commodore, Commodore, Stronger says he's struggling to carry our weight. I'm struggling myself. He's just being like crushed under Blackbeard's big ass. It says, with Big Mom and Kaido gone, the world's going to turn on its head. Sounds fun, huh? And he just starts laughing. All right, and he looks pretty menacing right there. He's got his big, you know, coat on him. He's got his hat with his Jolly Roger across the front of it. He's got some styling pants. I'm liking it. it. says, Kaido had one, didn't. Oh, oh, this man is looking for the road poneglyphs. It says, just how many low poneglyphs rubbings have you got? I'll be taking them off your hands. Oh, all right. Is Law just going to surrender? I don't think so. Says, you took the words right out of my mouth. 
Let's settle this. Winner take all. Yo, Law versus Blackbeard. I have to say, Law, my man, I love you, brother, but I do not think that you are coming out on top of this one. I don't think your crew is strong enough to take on Blackbeard's crew and hold them at bay so that you could have just a straight up, you know, one-on-one -on -one fight with Teach. Um, I don't think Teach would fight fair, you know, regardless if he was starting to lose. I could definitely see one of his, like Burgess or someone trying to jump in or Van Auger, you know, someone trying to do something. But, man, Law versus Blackbeard. All right, so Blackbeard knows about the road Poneglyph, but the question is, how does he know about them? Did he, is he the one that has, you know, the, uh, the road Poneglyph that we saw at Fishman Island in the flashback with Roger and Odin? Is, is that how he kind of came about it? Um, did he know about them because he was on Whitebeard's crew and, you know, overheard it because of what Roger told Whitebeard? You know, any one of these uh, kind of ideas of how Blackbeard knows about it would make sense to me, but I guess it's kind of immaterial, you know. He said that he was going to become the Pirate King, you know, to Luffy. So I guess you would have to assume that he knows about these road poneglyphs or, you know, Blackbeard's always kind of intelligent as far as having a plan. He can kind of be an idiot in the moment, but he always has a real good long game going and he plans things out. So if you plan to acquire all these strong devil fruits and all these strong crew members and, you know, he has ambitions to find the one piece, I got to think that he had prior knowledge of the road poneglyphs or knew exactly which ones to look for and figured he'd let someone else take care of taking out Kaido and Big Mom and then taking them for himself. So, uh, yeah, if you guys think we're going to jump back into uh, Blackbeard versus Law in the next chapter, are we going to hop back and see more of um, kind of things with Vegapunk? We didn't get a, you know, a uh, Vegapunk reveal this time. And then um, that Kuma that we saw wasn't the Kuma that Cypherpole, uh, you know, Aegis Zero, Luffy and them were transporting to Egghead Island. So they're still kind of in the mix, kind of seeing where they're going to come into play. Are we going to see a Straw Hat, Vegapunk, um, we are Vegapunk team up, you know what I mean? All the Vegapunk plus the main Vegapunk teaming up with the Straw Hats and Bonnie to take down uh, Cypher Pole. And I don't know, one of the things that got me at the end of the last chapter was, you know, the fact that Luchi was kind of questioning why they were killing, you know, the smartest man in the world and if it had anything to do with, you know, the recent incident um, with the island exploding and everything like that. So I'm kind of starting to question if maybe Lucci's loyalties could potentially start to waver as he's seeing, you know, the destructive decisions that um, he's being ordered to do and the positions that it would put them in would be a negative. There's not really a positive spin to it, at least from his knowledge of what he knows, it seems like. But, yeah, that was a good chapter. I can't wait to see some more uh, Blackbeard versus Law. It was kind of hyped to see, you know, we got a few more Devil Fruit updates for Blackbeard's crew. Uh, I'm not sure if those were already in the Beaver cards. Uh, I'm not too current on those, but let me know what you guys thought about this chapter. Let me know if I missed anything. Um, what do you guys think? Where are we going to go next? Next chapter? What's happening? Let me know down in the comment section. Uh, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if you aren't subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell icon to be notified for all of my future videos, and have a wonderful day.